So in the pilot, we started off with a uh, time machine was built. Uh, they assembled a team of three uh, to uh, go after this, this time machine bandit who stole it. Uh, we took our backup time machine and chased after him and um, all through time, all through seasons. And now here we are um, sort of working with him, with Flynn, and uh, trying to take down the bigger evil that is Rittenhouse once and for all. Um, and at the end of season two, Rufus uh, was killed by Rittenhouse. So that's kind of our main goal is to bring Rufus back to life. And uh, that's where we pick up in this movie. We, we pick up right where we left off last season with future Lucy and future Wyatt saying, let's go get Rufus back. So that's where we pick up. We'll try to go get him back. Well, first and foremost, you're going to see more of the same, which everybody loves. We're, we're traveling to two different time periods, actually going international, which is really fun uh, because we don't do that very often. We're headed to Korea in the uh, Korean War in the 50s. Uh, and we're also headed to like Gold Rush era California, dry, dusty versus uh, cold, frigid. And which is also really interesting because we've been shooting in like 95 degree desert weather and the Korean War is supposed to be frigid cold. So they had to redress the entire set, snow everywhere, but meanwhile, it's actually 95 degrees out. <laughs> and there's definitely several nods to um, fandom. Um, I'm thinking of one, particularly the clock blockers. Listen out for that. Um, you're gonna hear a little, uh, a little nod to that. Um, I think people and, and, and fans of the show are gonna be really pleased with these well, I should say this movie. To have fans that invested that they're spending their own hard-earned money is, um, it's mind-blowing. I mean, it's one thing to be a fan and, and, you know, maybe send out a couple of tweets here and there, but to go to work, earn that money and, and work hard for it, and then to pay for banners to be flown over Comic-Con and Santa Monica and, uh, you know, for banners to be made and for, um, you know, space and Times Square to be put up. It's just, it humbles me um, and, and it feels good as a performer, it validates your work. You know, people love it so much, um, but I'm just happy to be a part of this. And, and it's, it brings me a lot of joy to see the joy that they get out of, out of the work that we do. Um, so I, I hope that they, you know, enjoy uh, seeing this two hour finale and, um, and I hope it brings them a little bit of peace and closure um, that we didn't really get with another season, but, uh, yeah, we'll see. It's different if you're going to talk about scenes or, or particular episodes versus what we went through just as an, as an, ex a personal experience. Um, you know, on that side of things, uh, the beginning of the, the whole series, me and, and Malcolm and Abby meeting for the first time, much like our characters meet for the first time, they're a crew of people that don't know each other. We got to figure out how to get along, how to make this thing work. And uh, as actors, we did that. Neither of us were really familiar with each other. And, um, you know, we got kind of got thrown into um, conditions that were, you know, long hours. And, and we have a really tough production here on Timeless. It's, uh, we have new sets every, every episode. We have new actors every episode. We have uh, just new costumes that are sometimes difficult to, to work in. Um, but all of that makes it really fun. And uh, I think just as a cast, we, we were able to, to bond um, through what we were doing and the PR blitz uh, at the beginning of the, uh, at the series and, you know, doing work in long, long hours and flying to Comic-Con and flying back. And um, that stuff is memorable to me. You know, it's just something that we all went through that kind of no one else can really experience unless you're going through it. Um, on, uh, on a production side, um, things that stand out to me, uh, the Alamo episode really stands out to me. Um, we turned a parking lot into the Alamo. Um, and it was like almost full size uh, in Vancouver, which was really weird. Uh, and it looked amazing. And the, it also stands out because that was one of Wyatt's first episodes where we really got to know that character and we kind of got to know some of his backstory. We saw some of the PTSD that he, he deals with as a soldier and um, kind of we see how he ticks. Um, so that was a big one to me, an important one to me. I loved the the German episode with the Nazis, uh, particularly because uh, why it got to be a little bit fun and funny during during that episode. Um, and we, I remember just having a good time on that episode. 
I think we were all just enjoying it. We all laughed a lot, loved our director of that episode, and um, we just had a really good time on that episode. Wyatt's been through a lot the last two seasons. He's kind of still going through it. I mean, the poor guy can't catch a break. He's always down on himself, which I feel like if we, have, if we, if we ever were to go on and, and have more timeless, I would love to see him not be down on himself because he's just sort of always feeling like he lets everyone down. Um, he just puts too much on his own shoulders. And, and, and I think with this two-hour finale, we're going to get to see a little bit of that lifted. Um, which I really enjoy seeing. And we get to see a little bit of happiness from him. It's something that he's just not experienced. Um, you know, like I said, there, there was a few episodes where he was able to be a little more witty and fun, fun, you know, banter back and forth with some of the other characters. But in general, the poor guy just never catches a break. Um, he just bears the weight of the world on his shoulders, and that's who he is. And that also makes me love him and respect him, though, too. You know, he's... He's the hero that's flawed, and he wants to do the right thing and protect those around him and protect the people he cares about, even if it means sacrificing his own happiness and his own physical well-being as well. So um, those are the reasons why you got to love Wyatt. I hope that the audience enjoys the finale like they've enjoyed the season. I hope there's as much passion for the finale in the closure as they've had for the last two seasons. Um, there's closure for the characters in a certain way. Uh, there's closure for the series as a whole in a certain way. Um, it's also somewhat left ambiguous. So you can kind of form your own opinions on what happens to these people and these characters and the time travel aspect of it. Um, I hope they just get a little a holiday treat. It's been a fun run. It's been a unique show, unlike anything I've been a part of before. As an actor, you don't get to, you don't get to go to set every day and really play a new character. Um, like I said, we, we work with different actors all the time, different sets all the time. It keeps things fresh and new and exciting. And um, I, in my opinion, it's the most unique television show on the air.